Chinese smartphone makers are having a run at the global market. You might have heard of brands like Xiaomi or OnePlus, but you may not have heard of Meizu. I know them from back in their MP3 player days, but back in 2012, they launched a smartphone, and I have yet to review a Meizu handset. This is my very first one, the MX4 Pro, and it is about to get the spot as my dedicated Android handset. Let's get into the review and find out why. <laughs> The Meizu MX4 Pro feels solid in your hand, and it comes with a spec sheet that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any other high-end smartphone around. A 2K Plus display means it sports a resolution of 2560 by 1536 and it has a negative LCD display. Under the hood, a Samsung Exynos OctaCore processor with 3GB of RAM and options for 1632 and 64GB of storage, which is key since there is no micro SD card slot. It weighs in at a hefty 158 grams and measures in at a not so thin 9mm thick. The three device highlights for me come with the 20.7 megapixel Sony Exmor rear cam. There's a 5 megapixel selfie on the front as well. The 3350 mAh battery took the crown in our battery test, standing up to two days of real world usage on me. And the unexpected third highlight is Fly Me 4 which is Meizu's Android skin, which was packed full of delightful surprises. The MX4 Pro is a lot of display, since we have bezels that are only 2.8 millimeters at the edges, which gives you a screen real estate of 76.5%. It also comes with a 2K plus display, marketing term yes, 2560 by 1536. This is basically what some other manufacturers are calling QHD or Quad HD. It's impressive, it looks good. Uh, I, do, I wouldn't call the color saturation overly vibrant, but it is definitely decent. What is a little bit different is it comes with a nega or negative LCD display. Viewing angles are solid and so is viewability in sunlight. The display boasts an impressive 546 ppi and it comes with a very decent maximum brightness of 450 nits. There's also a lot of adjustment levels in terms of that brightness, 2048 levels to be precise. Taking a closer look at the Samsung Exynos 5430 processor, it's the same one found in the Samsung Galaxy Alpha. It's also the world's first 20 nanometer high K middle gate chipset. The Exynos 5430 is based on ARM's big little technology, so that means it's got four A15 at 2 GHz and four power efficient Cortex A7s at 1.5. ARM's big little configuration means that the 5430 can decide whether to use each cluster separately or together depending on what you're doing with the handset. As you can see, the benchmarks definitely aren't a slouch. It doesn't win in each one, but we can tell you the performance is smooth and we haven't had a hiccup yet. What we have on the MX4 Pro is the same 20.7 megapixel shooter found on Sony's Xperia lineup, Z1 all the way up to Z3. Meizu has stepped up their game with an improved image signal processor that claims to further reduce noise. It still offers 30 frames per second continuous shooting and 4K video capture. If you're keen on making your phone as close to a DSLR as possible, you'll be happy to know that it has a very high ISO at 1600, which will give it decent low light performance. The autofocus is supposed to be very fast. It says 0.3 seconds, though I would call it closer to a second when I'm really using it around town. The front facing camera on the phone is an increasingly popular uh, feature, so it's nice that Meizu has stepped up their game with a 5 megapixel shooter, which also has autofocus, so that's nice, and a 1080p video recording if you need it. This is my first Meizu, so a lot of things are new to me, and the camera interface is simple. As you would expect, it offers several modes, auto, manual, beauty, panorama, light field, uh, which actually just combines several shots taken at different focal lengths. There is a night mode, scan for QR codes, which I think is kind of a nice touch, slow motion, and there's a micro spur, which is basically a macro mode. These are all the things that you can expect, but I definitely liked the way I got to flip through them nice and easy. Meizu was originally an MP3 maker and known for their quality audio experience. Ever since they entered into the smartphone market, they've always gone that extra mile to give great quality audio. Using your phone as a music player is becoming, well, pretty standard, and the MX4 Pro has hi-fi audio capability, or wait for it, retina sound. When at full volume, it does sound tinny. Won't lie. 
but I have been using the handset all week to play music when I get ready in the morning, and it has no problem filling my kitchen, which admittedly isn't huge, or my bedroom, which also isn't ginormous, uh, with enough sound, and I played at about 40%. I choose not to bring it up much higher because, like I mentioned, it gets a bit tinny. So let's give you a sample of what that sounds like right now. If Meizu had been smart, they would have had somebody follow me around with a camera just to get my reaction to uh, Fly Me 4.1. When I first saw that you could pull down the notification bar from anywhere just by swiping down in the middle of the screen, I think my face was literally like this. Oh, really? Let's get into some of the other software inclusions that I think are just quite clever. The app manager gets pulled up from the bottom and you can scroll through them just like that. Now if you want to close something, you can just flip them up. But let's say you don't want to close all of them. You just swipe down on a single app and it will clear everything out except for the one that you've locked. Mm -hmm. To unlock it, just press on it again. I'm a big fan of Fly Me 4.0 and it's little things like you can just pull down anywhere to pull down the notification bar. You keep on going, send it back up. Now, one of the cool features is Smart Touch. So you can activate this up. And actually, if you wanted to kind of do that, you can also rearrange these icons uh, as you like. But let's just focus on Smart Touch for just a second. So when that's gone, right here where my right thumb would be, there's a floating dot. Now this can pull down the notification bar. If you swipe right, these are the last apps that I had open. So it's like a mini navigation. Let's take a closer look at the settings. One of the things that I very much like about this UI is when you pull down, let's say you have your thumb down there from the bottom, it actually holds it down so you can reach with your thumb. But customization, let's start there. Fly me style icons, let's just kind of change them over. You can change your themes. Uh, now this is one of the interesting parts that I wanted, that I actually discussed in my written review. Is it a deal breaker that you end up in these Chinese sections? Now you can pretty easily figure this out, right? That that's free, that costs three renminbi. Um, over here, I just you know figured all this out from clicking around. Oh, I thought this was mine. No, this is mine. So these are the ones that I've downloaded. Here's if I wanted to search. These are different styles, if I knew what that meant. But you I mean you can figure it out by the pictures. So to me, this isn't a deal breaker if you want extra themes. If you want to buy the extra themes and pay for them, I haven't quite crossed that bridge yet. So system wallpapers, gallery life wallpapers, everything you kind of expect. This whole giant option of things does not include a settings. And you can easily lose your settings, say, if you put, it, put them into a folder. So that's just one of my little pet peeves about that. I don't know why they wouldn't include settings in the top notification bar. That just doesn't make sense to me. Anyways, not the biggest deal. Uh, there's Wi-Di, which is cool. Battery. Now, I ran our Laptop Mag battery test on performance mode, and I got just over 14 hours. That wasn't even in power saving. In power saving mode or balance mode, I'm getting two days of solid performance. This is a battery beast. On the test, it did 10 and a half hours and I had 32% left. That's enormous, so it's excellent. So fingerprint scanner, uh, M-Touch, definitely a very cool feature. Uh, one of the things that I've had to do is I've had to enter in multiple fingers, both of my thumbs and one index finger. I've done my thumbs twice because when I scanned them for the first time in Beijing, I think it was a lot colder and Taiwan's a lot more humid. So I actually had to deal with the swelling of my fingers, <laughs> basically, is I think what happened. So the fingerprint changed just a little bit. Now, that's no big deal. Uh, I just had to enter it multiple times. Now, does it get it every time? No. It's about every other time it gets it right off the bat. I have to do it twice, yeah, quite often, which is a little bit annoying. There's a lot in here. Gesture on wake up. So you can double tap the screen to wake up, slide to unlock, right? So then you have your painting notifications. Now these are from a black screen and they will open up many things. So let's just choose, there's I think eight different options. So let's pick this one, turn it on, and I'm gonna set that to uh, something interesting, like, 
Oh, where's, where's that, that? The music player. Okay. So now let's just turn this screen off and try that. So there we go. And it opens up to the music player. So it does work. Big fan. Oh, no settings up in there. Every time it gets me. <laughs> so home touch. You can choose to have it, you know, back or close. Um, oh, let's go back here. Slide right on the lock screen for an application. So you can obviously set your, your lock screen for many different things. Uh, power on and off. And then obviously this is running FlyMe 4.1. So this is, I'm really impressed with FlyMe 4.1. So ever since Sony took back their Xperia Z3 and Z3 Compact, I've been a little bit lost about what Android handset should make it into my pocket. Now, I was an LG G3 user, um, but like I've posted a lot about, I actually prefer the, the G2 over the G3. So I was really surprised that though this has a lot of the spec sheet that the G3 had, like the QHD display and the nice camera, that I actually prefer the Meizu MX4 Pro to the LG G3. Now, do I prefer it to the Z3? That's a tough one because it does actually have the same uh, 20.7 megapixel uh, Exmor lens on here. But I would actually today, not just because it's in my hand, I think if I had all three phones in front of me, uh, I would actually choose the, the Meizu MX4 Pro uh, simply because of the really, really smart software inclusions that they, they have. And the other handset makers, well, I guess it's a little bit expected. This phone is really big. And my one complaint with a phone this big is that I can't reach its notification bar. And just the inclusion of that, you know, that simple feature to swipe anywhere on the display to pull down is great. The fact that you can run your Android task manager from the bottom, they have that little button, smart touch, it's okay. But it's just the fact that there's just a lot of ways to navigate your phone while keeping it in one hand that the, the M-Touch, right, for the fingerprint sensor, that you can swipe down on that to go back is just, I think, really, really cool. Now, I did have to reinstall Facebook once or twice in order to get it working uh, perfectly, but I think maybe my productivity might have gone up if I didn't have Facebook on my phone. But regardless, that's not an issue. You can actually have Facebook. The international version is totally fine. Um, no problems there at all. But that is actually going to be the main reason why this phone may not be as successful as I think it should be. It's, it's their, their distribution isn't as strong as some of the other brands, but there are a lot of places to uh, pick up the phone. Uh, eFox Shop is actually one of them. Uh, Meizu has distribution channels and networks you can pick it up through their website as well. All right, I'm rambling. Let me wrap this up. This is actually going to make it into my pocket. This isn't going to be a phone that I'm going to put up onto the shelf and it's just going to be yet another review unit. I think that the software inclusion is so strong and it really surprised me that a Chinese handset maker was just so clever with a lot of the things that they did. I think that the Samsungs, LGs, and Sonys of the world could actually take a page from Meizu in how they've really nailed one hand use. That's the thing, if you want to use it with one hand, you have to go to a smaller handset, but if you like the bigger screen, then you just have to walk that line where my personal problem is I drop them. I drop them. I mean, I, you, your phone should not tell me how I should use you in my life. If I want to ride my bicycle and try to use my phone, then I should be, that, that's what I'm going to do. And knowing that I might drop my phone and break it doesn't deter me from doing it. So including software that allows me to navigate my life a lot easier and use my phone the way I want to, I think that that's brilliant. So amazing camera, great battery life, uh, LTE, solid price point. If you can pick up the Meizu MX4 Pro, I would strongly consider it. So Nicole Scott here for Mobile Geeks. If you liked this video, please give us a thumbs up. I'm doing all these videos and it's all basically for free for you guys to like give me a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. So please do that. Support me in this endeavor of making videos about smartphones for you. <laughs> Nicole Scott from Mobile Geeks. Amazing. Like, amazing. If I could be even more Valley Girl cliche, I would in that moment just to... Oh god, you guys are gonna hate that.